In this video, we will discuss using the new and improved Report Designer platform for styling your reports. This requires Microsoft Word to be installed on your PC, and also ideally a Windows 10 machine to use our PDF conversion app. This updated version of Report Designer released in July 2019 now can simulate the report navigation tabs. Report Designer is completely optional to use with Horizon. I think most of our users will stick with the classic PDF report, which clients and agents love, but wanted to make sure that you are aware of this tool and how it can work for you. To demonstrate this, I will pull up one of our classic report previews. This is the classic PDF option. First, here is our title page. The majority of this is a background image. The photo is at the top, the title, the illustration in the background, and the banner is all part of one image. Next, we have our cover letter. Then we get into the summary, and then into the body of the report. And at the end, we have our reference library. This is the report that most of you are used to. Over the years, we've collected lots of feedback and some users have requested the ability for the following. They want to be able to control the line breaks and page breaks in the report. Change the font color and place emphasis on text such as bold, italic, or underline. Reorder the report systems, such as having site info first. They want the option to add third-party illustrations, or use a larger title page photo. This is a small subset of what's possible with Report Designer. However, these are the main reasons why an inspector would want to use them. As a general guideline, we would only recommend to use this tool if your reports are relatively short, around 25 to 30 pages. If you're ready to learn more, let's get started. First, I'll go to the Microsoft Store. And I'll search for Horizon DocX to PDF Converter. This converter is used to convert the Word document back into a PDF once it's ready for distribution. Once you've downloaded it, you're ready to set up your report design. To set up your base design, go to the Horizon Profile. Under Section 3, Report Configuration, go to Report Designer Config and click on Settings. From here, click on Create New Base Template. Under Name Your Base Template, you can call it whatever you like. In this case, I'll call mine AE Word Theme. From the list of available styles, I'll choose the last one called Classic Horizon Report. Then I'll click Create. It is now turned on by default. It will likely require a bit of customization, so I'll do that next. This customization should only have to be done once, unless you need different variations of the same design. I'll download it and make a few changes. This part is very important. If you use any ancillaries, such as site information or pool and spa, for example, you will need to contact us to insert these into your base design before you can start using it. You can call or submit a support ticket on our help portal at horizonhelp.zendesk.com. Okay, so now I have it open in Microsoft Word. You will see here that it has some abstract data, 
but we won't touch it as modifying these will cause the tags not to work. There are lots of tags that can be used which can be found in our setup guide. To get started, I'll add my company logo to the title page. Click on the insert menu, followed by shapes, and I'll choose the rectangle shape. Once I drag the rectangle, I'll release, and under the Shape Format menu, in the Shape Fill, I'll choose Picture. Once I find my file, I'll insert it, and it's inserted a copy of my logo. It does appear a bit stretched, but that's okay. I'll just drag it down a little bit to correct that. Now there's still a blue outline, so I'll click Shape Outline, and I'll choose No Outline. Your logo may appear a bit different, but you can adjust as needed. You can also add your logo to other pages, like your cover letter and your invoice. So I'll just add it quickly to those pages as well. This time, I'll use the Insert menu and choose Pictures. If you'd prefer that we do this for you, just send us a copy of your logo and text and we can add it in. Once this is done, we'll move on to this summary. We have a predefined introduction and conclusion. You can use it as is or change it to your liking. One thing I'll do here temporarily is turn on the paragraph marks so you can see where it starts to to break and get into the dynamic content. This report style uses something called section breaks in Microsoft Word. These are not directly visible on the final product, however it gives you an idea of where things start to get dynamic. So all this stuff in here is dynamic content, which means it will loop through our reporting engine, and this stuff is static. So I do have a section break here, and also here after or prior to the conclusion. So I'll just turn off the paragraph marks again. And so now I have the main body of the report as well, where it loops through the engine until the document is complete. Okay, so now I'll save this document and we'll try it out. Now back in the report designer themes, I'll click upload slash replace and replace it with the one that I currently have. It's now ready to use. I'll use this on a sample report that I created recently. I'll click on the report button, then I'll go to report publishing. From here, in the Choose Report Design box, I'll switch it from the classic PDF to the Word theme. Once you do this, you'll notice that the inclusion options disappear because you're no longer using the classic PDF. I'll then click on Generate. Now, I can download it to Microsoft Word to use the new theme. Once you open it, you'll see the report data and photos in the Microsoft Word document. I'll make a few edits here to show you what's possible with this powerful new tool. The first thing you will notice is the large title page photo that has been applied. It's also applied the data for the client as well. 
It also has my cover letter, followed by my invoice. Now we get into the report. Don't worry about the brackets. This is just a Microsoft Word function in order to link the tab navigation. It won't show up in the reports once it's converted back to a PDF. In this particular report, I have a loan summary defect saying that the roof is old and worn out. We recommend that the summary is used to highlight significant defects from a cost or safety standpoint. I can even highlight it and turn the font red easily. Okay, first we have our roofing section. This is also an example of where we can start using this tool. Limitations is right at the edge here, and I want to move it down. I'll just click in front of that, and then I'll click on the Layout tab and click Split Table. The reason why I'm using split table is because each row of text is held in a Microsoft Word table cell. If you've ever used Microsoft Excel, you may be a bit familiar with the concept of table cells, which are containers for the data. Then I'll press enter. It has moved it down to the next page. Okay, so far so good. Once again, we recommend to use this only for cosmetic edits to your report. Now I've hit a case where the illustration and photos are not on the same page. In this case, if I click on the illustration and drag it inward a little bit, it'll fit the photos. It's the same thing here. I can drag the photo in a bit to get it to fit on the page. Before we move on, the tabs are not clickable here because it is still a Microsoft Word document. Once we convert it back to a PDF, the navigation will be clickable. Okay, I'll just make a few more quick edits and then we'll save the document. Here is a comment where the beam connections are weak. I'll just click on the photo and drag it in a little bit. It pushes it up to the next screen. Here is another comment where the handrails are missing, and there's an illustration, and the photo is on the next page. I click on the illustration and drag it inwards a little bit it's now able to fit in the photo. All right, so you get where you can make the changes to the report. I'll just make a couple more here. Here's another instance of the split table function. Structure is alone, and I want to bring it down, so I'll click on layout and I'll split the table, and it's automatically moved it to the next page. Here's another case where I want to bring the recommendations to the next page. Click in front and click Layout, Split Table, and press Enter a few times. It'll push it down.
Now, there may be a few occasions where the illustration, once it's too small, the text can't be read. So in this case, I'll just click on it and I'll delete it. And that actually looks a lot better. And everything fits nicely. Okay, so this document looks pretty good. I'm just going to click File, and then I'll save it. Take note of your file name. Once I close it here, I'm back on the Report Publishing screen. From here, click Upload Edited Report, and choose your document that you've modified. Now that it's uploaded, I'll click Convert to PDF. followed by Open Horizon DocX to PDF Converter. We downloaded this near the beginning of the lesson. Now that it's been published, it will open up the PDF. Let's see what we got. First, we have our custom title page, followed by the cover letter. Another thing you could do with this is add your signature to your cover letter if you'd like. Now we get into our summary. There is my block of red text. And then there is the main body of the report. As you can see, you can click on the navigation to move around. There are also various resource articles throughout the document. You'll also notice that there are no photo captions or numbering. This could be added to your base design as tags if you need them. I'll also just refresh the screen here so that I can finish publishing the PDF. Once you've refreshed, click Publish PDF. And now you're ready to email the report to your customer. And we're done. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about using Report Designer or need assistance setting this up, please contact us directly or visit our help center.